to our Deanery Novena to the Holy Spirit. During these nine days, we, like the apostles in the upper room after the ascension, gather in prayer. We pray for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit on our deanery and our diocese. At this time, we pray for the spirit of healing for our world, and especially for those who are sick. The spirit of fortitude for those who care for the sick and those who work to overcome the coronavirus pandemic. The spirit of consolation for those who mourn and for those who are lonely or afraid. As she accompanied the apostles during that first novena, we ask Mary, our mother, to accompany us, to teach us to be fully open to the coming of the Holy Spirit as she was. Father's unfeeling promise, 
purpose and plan, of the Son's victory and risen presence, the truth about ourselves, sinful yet children beloved of God. Holy Spirit, give us hope. Holy Spirit, give us peace, peace with God and with peace with all people. Kindle our desire for you. Strengthen our wills to live and serve. Teach us and lead us where you will. Holy Spirit, give us love. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. I think that what we suffer in this life can never be compared to the glory as yet revealed which is waiting for us. The whole creation is eagerly waiting for God to reveal his sons. It was not for any fault on the part of creation that it was made unable to attain its purpose. It was made so by God, but creation still retains the hope of being freed, like us, from its slavery to decadence, to enjoy the same freedom and glory as the children of God. From the beginning till now, the entire creation, as we know, has been groaning in one great act of giving birth. And not only creation, but all of us who possess the first fruits of the Spirit, we too groan inwardly as we wait for our bodies to be set free. Responsorial Psalm. The response is, you keep your pledge, O God, our Saviour. You keep your pledge, O God, our Saviour. You care for the earth, give it water. You fill it with riches, your river in heaven brims over to provide its grain. You keep your pledge, O God, our Saviour. And thus you provide for the earth. You drench its furrows, you level it, soften it with showers, you bless its growth. You keep your pledge, O God, our Saviour. You crown the year with your goodness, abundance flows in your steps, in the pastures of the wilderness it flows. You keep your pledge, O God our Saviour. The hills are girded with joy, the meadows covered with flocks, the valleys are decked with wheat, they shout for joy, yes, they sing. You keep your pledge, O God our Saviour. In these days, we are all too aware of the fragility of our world and of its need for fulfilment. Yet, even in the midst of the lockdown, as we become aware of the devastating effect of the virus and our televisions and internet are full of sickness and death, creation is bursting forth into new life. Trees that have been bare throughout the short days and long nights of winter are covered with leaves and blossom. Flowers bloom, and the warmth of the sun melts away in the frost of winter. The Spirit is at work, bringing new life, bringing beauty, bringing abundance. St. Bernard of Clairvaux speaks beautifully of the angel Gabriel coming to Mary. The angel tells her that she will conceive and bear a son through the power of the Holy Spirit. St. So Bernard talks of the whole of creation waiting, begging for Mary's answer. All of creation waits because, in the words of St. Bernard, on your word depends comfort for the wretched, ransom for the captive, freedom for the condemned, indeed, salvation for all the sons of Adam the whole of your race. And Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it done unto me according to your word. In this yes, Mary opens her entire self to the Spirit and therefore brings Christ into our world. So too, the whole of creation awaits our answer. In the oft-quoted words of St. John Henry Newman, God has created me to do him some definite service. He has committed some work to me, which he has not committed to another. 
I have my mission. We each are called to a work that cannot be passed to another. In that work, we bring Christ into our world. We cooperate with him in the fulfillment of creation. To do that work, we must open our hearts and minds to the Holy Spirit as Mary did. We must say our yes and repeat our yes each day, training our hearts and minds to be ever more open to the will of the Spirit. We allow the Spirit to mould and shape us, to mould our hearts and fashion them after the Lord's own heart. During these weeks, we have seen many acts of kindness, whether on a global scale or in our local community. Phone calls to those who are alone, shopping for those who are isolated, a kindly smile, courtesy in our shops and parks, above all, in our prayer for one another. In all these ways, we enable the Spirit to work in and through us, to bring about a world that is full of the beauty and splendour of our good God. Light immortal, light divine, visit thou these hearts of thine, and our inmost being filled. Christ Jesus, before ascending into heaven, you promised to send the Holy Spirit to your apostles and disciples. Grant that that same Spirit may perfect in our lives the work of your grace and love. Grant to us the Spirit of wisdom that we may aspire to the things that last forever. The Spirit of understanding to enlighten our minds with the light of your truth the spirit of counsel, that we may choose the surest way of doing your will, seeking first the kingdom, the spirit of fortitude, that we may bear our cross with you, and with courage overcome the obstacles that interfere with our salvation, the spirit of knowledge, that we may know you and know ourselves and grow in holiness, the spirit of piety, that we may find peace and fulfilment in the service of God while serving others. The spirit of fear of the Lord, that we may be filled with a loving reverence toward you. Teach us to be your faithful disciples and animate us in every way with your spirit. Amen. Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. 